Welcome to Last Breath Live, where we share strategies, tips, tricks, and tactics for hunting big whitetails, food plots, tree stands, trail cameras, and more. The goal of this series is to bring you educational outdoor content live as it happens in the field. Created by hunters for hunters, thank you for tuning in to Last Breath Live. Do us a favor and subscribe to our channel. Turn on the bell notifications and drop us a comment in the section below. That makes sense. These All right, we're entering the bat cave. And what are we doing today? We are hanging up our murder locations. Mm -hmm. Ambush points. The eagle's nest. It's like this giant clip. So that way when you hang up your stand, you can just go right to the top of your sticks or whatever you have and you can put this around the tree and then the stand just sits right there in that channel. It's like a... So that way when you hang your... When you go to hang your stand, all you carry up the tree and throw around it is this. Yeah. Wrap that around it, strap it, and then you go up with the stand and it just locks yep. in rather than trying to like bear hug the stand and wing a ratchet strap. Now that we've... I mean, we've done it. Lots of times. It's just... Uh, it's a little easier this way. We got the buckmobile going, and we got a good pair of summits um, in the back. This is this actually this pair of summits is going to be going a sweet location. So we got a four-acre destination corn field um, that we're going to periodically be knocking down um, during the season, and this is going to go in like a location where we can hunt at late season, um, and we are going to put it right along an edge feather and. Uh, We'll share that with you guys when we get out there, but that's what we're doing today. And it's the day after the launch party. Today is August 1st. Um, so we're gonna go hang up three stand locations at, um, at one of our properties today. Out on one of our favorite farms. We're probably doing a lot of work for maybe nothing. Uh, this piece got hammered with the HD last year. We don't even know if we're gonna have a shooter on it this year, but we have the Moultrie camera bag, Summit Vines, couple pair of summits one of the coolest presents that jeff's ever given me i've got an electric pole saw which works awesome uh and we're gonna go hang hang them up today three sets of three sets of stands today so should be a good day get it done plenty before season and maybe we'll have a deer to hunt so what's the scenario here oh well, that was one of the most that is the most important part if you ask me about hanging a stand and that is finding the tree and more times than not, we've got up in the tree and it's not been right. So we climbed down to climb up another one. So got a big path here. Edge is feathered all along this. this. Yep. So what we have here that's unique, because last year it was <clears throat> in that tree right there. Mm -hmm. However, since then, we've done this, <clears throat> which is awesome. But we've feathered this entire edge up to that point of trees, which this is about 150 yards this way. This is about 150 more yards this way. And this is also feathered. So we have just a huge jam of trees that we cut down on this edge here and fell them all this way on this side. And it's just locked, right? They cannot get through here. So we have this trail here that we're going to be able to hunt this corn on late season. Um, and we're picking out a stand to put a bow set in. And this is the only way in or out of this whole edge. So for about 400 yards, this trail, that's it. So we're trying to make sure that this is in the right spot because if there is a deer that we want to kill during the late season and he wants to access this food, he's going to have to walk through that path to get to us. So that's why this has got to be right. Right? Right. All right, so we picked out the tree. And we're going to be about 14 yards off of the field edge. So if we need to shoot up and over our edge feather, we'll be able to. But Garrett and I had the conversation, and he brought up that the main use of this stand is shooting a buck coming in and out of the food on this trail. 
because if they skirt around our edge feather, it really doesn't do us good anyway, and we can't hunt them until, you know, the following day. So we picked our tree. Here it is. What's the species, Captain? Hackberry. Hackberry tree. So we're gonna take the vine. These are the vine. That's what this is called by Summit. That's just a climbing system. So we've got four lengths, each of which are five feet. So this will set us up about 20 feet. It means our stand height's gonna be about 15, 16 feet. We always like to run our run our vines or our sticks or whatever you want to call them past where our stand's going to be so we can get in and out of them quickly, quietly, and easily. So we're just going to hang these up, go up that tree. If you guys can see where it kind of starts to split right there, that's where we're going to be, right up there. Stand one, successfully been installed in the tree. I'm going to take this other one. Go hang it up too. Okay, hey, welcome to the eagle's nest. Oh, hello. You want to tell people what we're looking at here? Foliage. That's it? That's what we're looking at. There's green stuff. Oh, you guys can see that path there. There's a side by side. And that path we killed with a triclopyr roundup mix. And there's a lot of bedding. Right yeah, up there. Yeah, that's a good tip you should tell everybody. You could tell them. You did it. Um, so, ground clear, you can buy it, uh, and it works well. Roundup makes their version of ground clear. Triclopyr is an herbaceous, like indiscriminate killer. So you use it for like trees and shrubs, or uh, put it on stumps if you don't want it to come back. But if you do a 50-50 equal part glyphosate and triclopyr, which glyphosate is Roundup, um, you will have ground clear. So we sprayed that path. The end of March, end of March, right? Yeah. I mean, a long not, time ago. And it works. I mean, it has a residual effect for like six months. So, in your ATV paths, or you want to spray electric fence or a border, um, maybe you've got trees that you're freshly planting, uh, whether it's oaks or fruit trees or mass trees, and you want to kill the foliage around the bottom of it. 50 50 triclopyr, glyphosate. There you have it. Perfect. So, what we got here is I'm in the camera stand, quote unquote. Garrett would be the quote unquote hunter stand. So when we hang up pairs of summits, we always do them in pairs. So that way we can film. And the reason why he is sitting the way he is is because we have a trail right there and that's our shot opportunity. We got a hole right there we're gonna make, hole right there that already exists. And since he is, you know, this is gonna be his bow hand, you know, you wanna be shooting like, at least we try to always be perpendicular, right. or excuse me, parallel with the stand. So that way when we stick our bow arm out, we can shoot all of this and it's not like a, it's not a problem. You're not shooting out of position. It's less movement in the stand. We always try to, to position our stand so we can shoot seated as well. I know a lot of guys like to stand up and that's a habit we broke. We always like a deer would be coming. We'd get up out of the stand real slow and put the seat up. But that, that movement is not necessary. If you practice a little bit at home, just seating. So the bow hanger will be sticking here. Say there's a deer coming down the trail to feed or Potentially vice versa, Grant or I have got eyes on a deer that's coming back to bed. You just grab the bow, rest the cam on your leg, and you're at the ready. And then when the moment of truth is, draw back, and you're in the game. So. so that's our view. We've got big trail there. But as you guys can see, there's a big log jam right there. And we created all the way, like we're, we're in the middle of like 300 yards of edge feather total. And this trail is the only way out of this jam and this jam. So they have to walk past us if they're gonna come from our central bedding area here, which is why it is the way it is. So currently that way is north. So a northwest wind, which would be blowing us like this, just pushes us would right be on pushing the us area. right here, barely on the edge of the field, just barely, but mostly, but mostly on the back of our edge feather, which deer should not be in anyway because they will not be able to get out into our field. So we have our corn, and uh, yeah, that's the strategy behind this stand. And um, yeah, that's why we hung it here. A couple of these, like we call them accessory hooks. One's gonna be for our camera bag and the other is gonna be for our hunting pack. And uh, yeah, those go in every tree. And then I'm also gonna grab this pole saw in a second and our electric pole saw over here. Everybody say hi to the mole tree. We're on video, yeah. Probably get that picture to our cell phone in about three minutes. What? Uh, did you 
pick up the little hand saw? Yeah, I got it. You got it in your pocket? No. I put I took it back to side to side. We're gonna go. We're gonna clear some stuff out and get some shooting lanes, and then this one's pretty much done. Okay, so I don't know if I showed you guys this yet. We actually filmed our first Laugh Breath Live back in March with the intention of rolling it out sooner, but just didn't get around to it when I was editing our season up. But here's our other management strategy that we've been going with, and that is that uh, there's so much more food that's gonna be available to deer in timber. There's so much more food to take into consideration on a like a property that you hunt rather than just your food plot. So there's the availability to do a lot of TSI improvement and bring food down for deer and kill certain types of trees to flush new growth up. So that's what we've done here. So every hedge tree in this whole flat, we've come around and Garrett took the saw and rung it. Like you can see that one, that one. I mean, literally every hedge tree for about, for about 10 acres we did this to. And we sprayed, um, we sprayed triclopyr in the cut and now all of these hedge trees are dead opening up the canopy and I don't know if you guys can see this in here it's not probably going to be a big difference to you but for he and I this area which is about 10 acres like I said that we did this project with our hedge trees with this all used to be like extremely open without a lot of vegetation growing on on the forest floor and now just this new green flush of growth is gonna help us out and essentially provide like a lot more tonnage and a lot more food on our property other than just the stuff that we have in our food plot. So that's something we did back in March when uh, before the uh, foliage had popped up and before all the trees had start budding out. So we've got like 10 acres that we wiped clean of hedge and just literally just take a saw, run it around the outside of the tree and then spray it with a backpack sprayer with a uh, triclopyr. And um, we've just got a ton of new foliage growing in here that's gonna hopefully hold deer because of the amount of cover and add to the uh, nutritious buffet of food that we got on our property. So that's why we did that. So we got our lanes. We got one kind of on the trail that I'm on and then there's another one about 20 yards that way. So that way if we miss the deer in opening one coming out of the field onto the path, then we can shoot them in number two and conversely, if we miss them in that hole coming into the field, we can shoot them in hole number two here. So we always try to give ourselves like two options, especially with the finagling the camera and getting all of that stuff lined up. So that way we have twice as much of a chance without removing too much cover. But that's pretty much it for today. We'll see you guys for another uh, Last Breath Live next Wednesday. You got anything to say? No. Cool. Something else stupid we do. Take a little eye bolt. <laughs> oh yeah. Cause oh, we've got bow really, hanger. Well not bow hanger, just uh well our hoist rope. It's just we got really tired of chasing it after a windy day. So just you can do it on the tree that you obviously you got your stand in. But this is a little dead head tree. We actually rung it. Yeah, we rung this one. See all these hedges are dead.